My lovely, lovely imps, we have to talk about Israel-Palestine again. Um, as most people here will know, uh, that has been the sort of center of the, uh, of the news cycle for over a week now. Um, and uh, things have been genuinely harrowing. Um, the conditions uh, being enforced on Palestine by Israel right now in retribution for a terrorist attack that was perpetrated by the group Hamas, which for the record does not represent all of Palestinians and does not even represent all of the Gaza Strip. Um, a terrorist attack was carried out by Hamas and in retribution for uh, this attack, the state of Israel um, has displaced over a million people and is currently threatening um, uh, not uh, sorry sorry has displaced a million people has killed thousands of Palestinian civilians including a large amount of children um, and has been lobbing bombs uh, uh, into uh, a one of the most densely packed places on earth um, in addition to that Israel has been threatening a full ground invasion of the Gaza Strip. Um, this is horrifying to even think about. Um, there have been demonstrations against this genocidal behavior, and it is unquestionably genocidal behavior. Um, uh, there have been demonstrations all over the planet. Um, in fact, I went out to dinner yesterday uh, near Seattle, and there was a, uh, even in the rain, there was a medium-sized uh, uh, free Palestine protest going on, um, which was uh, pretty wild to see. And it was actually raining out. People were out in the rain to protest uh, and show their support. Um, and of course, uh, this, the actions taken by Israel have been, um, uh, have been uh, supported almost unquestionably by the United States. Um, Joe Biden has done nothing except for very, 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 very vaguely gesture towards it's bad to kill civilians, okay? Uh, he has refused to uh, basically tell Israel, you need to stop killing so many civilians. They have basically looked the other way and enabled this behavior and in fact outright supported it. And it is truly sickening and disgusting. Um, and uh, there was a couple of things that I wanted to, to talk about um, that have, because it's been a couple of days since I last um, uh, talked about this. One of them is this, um, this tweet right here. So this was originally tweeted on October 16th by the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu. This, and this is what he said, this is a struggle between the children of light and the children of darkness, between humanity and the law of the jungle. Um, now this screenshot was at 5.9 million views, but it got nearly 10 million views before it was finally deleted by the account at hand. Um, and I think that really says it all about this situation. Um, Benjamin Netanyahu's party is unquestionably engaged in a uh, racist uh, and horrifically uh, hate-fueled uh, ethnic cleansing campaign. That's what this is. This is an attempt to uh, kill uh, as many Palestinian people as possible, uh, which will ultimately leave land uh, empty and open for future uh, uh, conquest and taking by the state of Israel. Uh, describing uh, describing a ground invasion into Palestine, describing a bombing campaign against Palestine, which has killed a majority of targets killed have been civilians, okay? A majority, okay? By all reputable sources. 
calling that a war between the children of light and the children of darkness is so on the nose that you can uh, that, that that there's just there's no other way to describe it than for what it is genocide it's disgusting something that has been happening recently i've talked about this issue um pretty extensively and my position on this issue has explicitly been to call out the egregious human rights violations that have been occurring all throughout this event, okay? That has been the focus. My focus has been to make sure that people are equipped and focusing on what actually matters. The fact that there are an uncountable amount of people suffering right now from egregious, egregious human rights violations is what should be on everyone's minds. And even though that has been my focus, my videos have received a surge of comments that um, genuinely uh, make me sick. Uh, there has been a whole bunch of new uh, um, unknown accounts, people that I'm not familiar with in my comment section, who flooded in on my recent videos to do genocide apologia, to uh, uh, basically say they had it coming who've come in to find excuses for why it's certainly okay that 1.1 million civilians have been uh, displaced and that even more are going to be displaced in, uh, in a place where water, electricity, telecommunications, and fuel has been cut off, that there is an, acti an active mass dehydration event going on. And there, there have been comment after comment of these people coming in to, to excuse this, to say, to be mad at me for calling it out for what it is. It is genuinely sickening. And it just, it just really... It really makes me. Uh, uh, it really makes me realize that we that that a lot of people ha didn't learn anything from the past few decades. That the wanton death and destruction was too far away from their mind. Uh, they put it out of their mind, and so they're still willing to become bloodthirsty. They're still willing to act as though these are just numbers on a page and not living people, living people who have been ordered by a government that controls their lives and does not give them a vote to uh, leave on short notice or else face a nearly certain death. Uh, and the place that they have to leave to is uh, a, a similarly densely occupied place that has currently no water, no clean water, very limited, if any, access to food, no fuel and no electricity that there are people who can ignore all of that and still cling to their hyper-nationalist good guys versus bad guys rhetoric, and that this is being echoed at the top echelons of the Israeli government, that the prime minister himself on Twitter was willing to put out a statement saying, we are engaged in a war between the children of light versus the children of darkness, order versus the law of the jungle. Lessons not learned. Yeah. It just goes to show you that we can never, ever, any of us who care about this, any, any person who claims to care about human life and a better world can never rest on their laurels. You can never rest uh, uh, and just assume that people have learned things. Um, uh, that, that, that like the lessons of the Holocaust or the lessons of, 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 of Iraq have been learned. People forget them. People don't care in the first place. People get lost in domination fantasies. People are willing to look the other way, and it is, uh, it is incredibly stressful. There has been, um, this is going to be a small pivot, okay? 
um, there has been a bit of a, let's call it a uh, kerfluffle, okay, uh, on social media around uh, a um, the bombing of a hospital, the p alleged bombing of a hospital. And um, I want to take some time out of this segment to uh, reinforce something that I have said in my previous segments um, to all of my viewers. Uh, please be very, very careful about social media right now. And I mean extremely careful, okay? Um, there is so much misinformation going around. And in addition to that, there is uh, the uh, uh, there is a uh, severe uh, information jamming going on. Um, there is a in this situation, as we as we have discussed, Israel has completely cut off electricity and telecommunications within Gaza, um, which means that um, Israel's narrative is by definition always going to get. Uh, more airtime. It is always going to get uh, more uh, credibility. And even still, even with all of that, it is still possible uh, to unintentionally come to wrong conclusions about information that has been presented. And people need to be very, very careful about this. Um... Mistress Lynn says I've been told not to trust Al Jazeera. I don't. I don't think that that's a fair conclusion. I tend to find, I tend to find um, Al Jazeera fairly good. Uh, they're not perfect. None of that. No. Uh, no outlet is perfect. But I tend to find them to be fairly good on this. Um, the uh in the in this particular situation there has been a flurry of misinformation and it really sucks because um first what was circulating was a uh, allegedly the gaza ministry um the gaza ministry of health claimed that there was 500 people killed in the bombing of a hospital and uh, immediately, that was immediately countered with a flurry of very, very strange behavior by uh, the IDF. The IDF replied by posting and then deleting various videos. They changed their messaging on it three to four times in the course of a couple of hours. Um, and now uh, there appears to be, uh, as as of what I checked uh, before this, even major news outlets such as Reuters and AP News um, were unable to verify a number of things. Um, for example, Israel released a recording that they claimed was two Hamas agents uh, talking over the phone about, uh, oops, we missed and shot a missile into the hospital. Um, and it's very interesting because despite them putting this out on social media, getting this recording out, no one has really been able to verify that that recording is what it actually says that it is. And in fact, it's really funny because nearly every major news organization has had to put an addendum that explicitly states we have not been able to verify this recording at all. It's there. The. It's literally just the word of the IDF and a recording of two unidentified people and it includes cuts and it has been censored at moments. They added beeps to certain things. So it's a highly, highly edited piece of audio that nobody can provide context for and Israel is circulating this on social media. So they're bypassing even the standard press in order to push a very specific narrative. Do you see what I'm talking about, about the dangers of misinformation in this time right now? Some photos have circulated um, showing that the hospital appears to still be standing and that there was a uh, explosion of some type in the parking lot, which destroyed a bunch of cars and appears to have killed um, as there's a there's signs that there was tents and blankets in the park that is like there's like a small like 
patch of grass and trees that is right next to where the bomb hit and there appears to be a lot of destroyed stuff over there so it's people have estimated that it's possible that a number of people died there it's also uh, uh people have been uh like even major news sources have been unable to verify how many people died so it seems like um there's a possibility that the 500 number was not accurate and also that israel's initial statements may also not be accurate it is a genuine nightmare storm of misinformation out there here's a statement it's truly disturbing that members of Congress rush to blame Israel for the hospital tragedy in Gaza. Who would take the word of a group that just massacred innocent Israeli civilians over our key ally? I will always stand with Israel and look forward to supporting any military intelligence or humanitarian aid to get the job done. Now, it's funny because the truth is, first of all, it wasn't a statement from Hamas. It was a statement from a a health uh, from a uh, the 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 Gazan Health Ministry, um, which is to some degree entangled with Hamas. But it is very difficult to know how much control Hamas actually has over it. Um, and secondly. If you'll notice that even in the early reporting, every single report that I read explicitly stated that this was a claim that was being issued by the Ministry of Health. And on top of that, who would take the word of a group that just massacred innocent Israeli civilians over our key ally is an absurd thing to say when Israel is currently literally as we speak involved in a mass murder campaign against palestinian civilians not against hamas against palestinian civilians they have been incredibly careless verifiably careless the un has documented how many civilians have been killed by israel since the beginning of this and the number is fucking astronomical so this is the this is an incredibly weak and pathetic statement from john fetterman It's incredible to me that um, how successful misinformation has become in war efforts. In, in the struggle between Ukraine and Russia, Russia, do, do you remember? Oh my God, Russia has just been like, in the course of the last like year and a half, Russia has been churning out misinformation, completely faked videos, just being dumped out by Russian social media, by Russian state media, just blasting it out constantly. And sometimes it doesn't even, it's like they don't even care. The only purpose is to get people to basically throw their hands up and go, it doesn't matter. Because, it, because if they can convince you to throw your hands up and say it doesn't matter, then you'll look past the verifiable truth. And this is why I caution people against m misinformation so much, okay? I caution people against this so much and to be careful about, di about engaging in misinformation. We have seen so much misinformation since this started. The goal of these types of misinformation campaigns is to is to basically uh, grant equivalency when the fact of the matter is that the Israeli state has itself directly from the from the from the mouth of the state itself they have said that they see this as a war of light versus darkness that they see this as a a a war between order and the and the uh, and the law of the jungle that they are willing to engage in a mass displacement campaign. And, and so what they want instead, the, the goal of doing this stupid crap is to get people to throw their hands up and, and just say, oh, whatever, everything's, you know, none of it matters. It's all misinformation. Look, Hamas lies, Israel lies. And when in reality, the reality on the ground is not a fucking struggle between Hamas and Israel. It's a struggle between Israel and Israel civilian people it's a struggle between hamas and civilian people this is an a a uh, 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 uh an an endless 
nightmarish churning of innocent life. And the facts of the situation have not changed even a drop. No matter how much misinformation is put out, no matter how much back and forth arguing is done, Israel has completely isolated uh, millions of people in Gaza. They have cut off water, food, electricity, communication. Israel is able to use its social media to say whatever they want, and it does not even matter if they're telling the truth or lying on any in individual incident, because the, tr the underlying truth is they control the platform. They are the only ones who are able to say anything. They can tell the truth, they can lie, they can mix in truth and the lies, because they're the ones who control the platform. Because, they're, because the, the people that they, are, that they are punishing for the sins of, a, of, of Hamas cannot speak for themselves and are dying en masse. Oh, is this that NATO thing? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Posadas John says, you remember this Russian disinfo banger from back at the beginning of the Ukraine war? And it's this, uh, the, the supposed secret radio communications of NATO troops in Ukraine, where conveniently both of the NATO troops have thick Russian accents, and they're just talking about exact, exactly what would be convenient for Russian, uh, for, uh, for Russian propaganda. This is this is this is identical to what was just done today. The call, the so-called call between Hamas, where it's completely unverifiable, uh, and they just so happen to be saying they're they're talking to each other. They're like, "Oh no, our rocket! It we were shooting our rocket at Israel to kill Israelis, but we missed, and we blew, and it blew up a parking lot." Oh. Oh no, that's terrible. We should blame this on Israel. And the other guy goes, yes, we should blame it on Israel, even though it was our missile that blew up in the parking lot, right? Mr. Other Fellow Hamas Agent. And then news organizations have to go, uh, hold on a second. Can we have some verification on this? And, and Israel's just on to the next thing. They've already blown up six more buildings. They've already blown up six more apartment blocks. It's so funny how quickly everything goes out of people's minds. Literally, it was, it was what, like three or four days ago that, uh, that there was definitive proof that Israel uh, blew up a, a convoy of civilians and 70 people died, that they shot a missile at an innocent convoy of civilians and they all died. That was like four days ago. UN workers killed, members of the press killed, forgotten. Forgotten because Israel can create a, if they so desire it, they can create a misinformation storm around one particular incident. And that incident can make people go, ah, whatever, and ignore the actual facts of the situation. It is, this is, this is the, the age that we live in of social media mass mental manipulation. It is rotten. And be careful, okay? Be careful out there. Two minutes ago, a senior U.S. official in the State Department uh, resigns resigns over lethal assistance to Israel. Jesus, wow. Wait, so they, they stepped down? That's a good call. I, 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 I applaud somebody stepping down over uh, being asked to participate and equip someone for a genocide. People need, we have to build up resilience against misinformation. 
You've got to play the audio. It's so bad. Oh, let me try the audio. Let me see. We'll just do this just so you guys can see how how desperate misinformation has gotten. This is the this is the Russian misinformation from the Ukraine war. Give the wrong coordinates. They can fucking determine it where it does. Yes, sir. Oh, fucking dying. Have been showing us for several hours. Guys are dying. We can't evacuate them. It's just fucked up. We don't even shoot back. Tell me coordinates. Right down. Four seven point. Three six one eight six one three thirty four point. Seven six three seven two four eight. I repeat, it's not them. Who the hell knows? Let's check. Ukrainians can't fucking do anything. They would have died long ago without us. They're those bastards. I kill them. <laughs> Hello. I am NATO. I am NATO soldier number one. Not NATO soldier number two. What do you think of the Russians? They are trash. Let us kill them against international law. Correct. We are going to commit a, a violation of international law to kill Russians specifically. Do not do. Why does your accent sound so Russian? It is not. This is English accent. I am from England. Me too, I am also from England. No wait, France. I am from France. You are from yeah, England. Uh, just just be careful out there, okay? These uh, these nations that are engaged in genocidal projects are really, really willing. Turns out if you're willing to engage in genocide, you might just be willing to engage in a blatant and obvious lying for the purpose of creating mass confusion so that people check out and don't care about the actual facts. The facts being uh, that uh, one, one state, Israel, controls complete and utter access and also maintains an apartheid state over uh, millions of people and that they don't give a fucking shit about human rights and have been uh, engaged in literal decades of civilian killing, okay? Let's just remember that, all right? Just remember that, okay? There's not much else, uh, there's not much else that I can say right now on this subject. Um, Try to be very, very cautious, okay? Try to take it easy. Try not to get um, aggroed. Are you all familiar with the concept of aggro in like a, in, in like a video game? I wanna try and make it make sense, okay? In a video game, there's this concept called aggro, which is basically how a, uh, 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 an enemy in, in video games usually specifically uh, MMOs like World of Warcraft and the like. It, aggro refers to how they decide who they're going to focus their attacks on. So managing aggro is something that uh, usually someone has to do. They have to basically, uh, there's all cold, lots of different ways that games handle it, but basically uh, they have to make sure that the enemy focuses on them. And you usually want the enemy to focus on your strongest person who can take all the damage while your damage dealers can, can do damage without being focused on by the boss. Hence, aggro. Managing aggro is how you, how you uh, basically manage the focus of somebody. Don't get aggroed, okay? On these topics, when you are thinking through politics, mind the fact that you can be aggroed. They are trying to aggro you, okay? They're trying to pull your attention to specific things. Israel would way, way, way rather have a bunch of people bickering back and forth, even, and think about it like this, even if they come to the conclusion that Israel did it, they would rather have people bickering about one incident than focusing on the entire context and talking about the facts of the situation. Because if people are busy arguing back and forth about one single incident, meanwhile, Israel's literally, they fired 6,000 bombs in the first couple of days of this. 6,000 by their own admission, that was their number. And they want people to sit there and spend all their time going back and forth around one specific incident. So mind your aggro, okay? Don't get aggroed by belligerent genocidal states, whether it's Russia or the United States or Israel. Don't let your mind get aggroed, okay? 
That's all I have to say on this particular subject right now. We will inevitably be updating people more and more on the Israel-Palestine situation. Um, uh, and uh, I hope that I was able to provide some insight and information that is valuable to you. If so, please make sure that you press subscribe down below. I try to keep up with really important topics like this. I've covered this topic a lot. And of course, I talk about a whole lot of other stuff. So please press subscribe down below. And if you have thoughts, leave me some comments, hopefully productive ones and not uh, this disgusting genocide ap uh, apologia that I've seen going on recently from mysteriously fresh accounts with no uh, uh, account avatar that were created within the last two weeks. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.